Imagine you're in a ditch and you have a soccer ball. It takes a certain amount of energy to kick the soccer ball to the top of the ditch. It takes more energy to kick the ball out of the ditch. And if you don't kick the ball hard enough, it will stay in the ditch. Now, electrons work similarly. In an atom, you have a positive nucleus made up of protons and neutrons, and you have negative electrons surrounding it. The negative electrons are categorized into energy levels. These are groups of electrons with different amounts of energy and different distances from the nucleus. Lower energy levels have less energy and are closest to the nucleus. Electrons want to be in low energy levels. But there's a catch. It takes energy to go from a high energy level to a lower energy level. So if an electron doesn't have this much energy, it can do something called tunneling. Going back to our analogy, imagine you kick the soccer ball through the wall of the ditch, out the other side. This is kind of what electrons do. An electron will get energy out of pretty much nowhere and travel through this barrier into the lower energy level. Mathematically, we can explain this with the Schrodinger equation. In the Schrodinger equation, we have A, which is a constant that doesn't really matter in this case. We have V, which is potential energy, which also doesn't matter before the barrier. We have E, which is the amount of energy that the electron has. This is going to be positive. And we have H, Planck's constant. M is the mass of the electron, which is also a constant. In this case, x is going to be negative because we are before the barrier and we consider the barrier zero. So when we calculate this out, it gives us a pro high positive probability that the electron exists before the barrier. Something changes once we cross into the barrier. <coughs> the amount of potential energy necessary for something to be in this barrier exceeds the amount of energy that the electron has before the barrier. You would think this would make it impossible for the electron to be there, but when we plug these into our function, it turns out that the Schrodinger equation becomes an exponential decay function. This means that the probability of the electron crossing through the barrier is very low, but still there. On the other side of the barrier, we go back to normal, where our potential energy necessary to be there is zero, and the electron has normal amount of energy, the likelihood that the electron crossed through the barrier goes down quite a bit, meaning it's very unlikely but still possible that the electron will cross the barrier.